Hello, everybody. This is Kevin Smith with Board Game Losers, and today I'm continuing my countdown. I know there's been a little delay in me getting uh, media out there and, and some videos out there, but uh, this is my countdown where I'm going from uh, the least complex game to the most complex game in my collection. Now, of course, my collection is going to change over time, but I already have a list printed out so that I don't get uh, interrupted or, or add games to this list uh, that I just acquired or I'm going to acquire in the future. It's just as my games were when I started doing the videos, that's what I did. So today uh, I'm bringing you King of Tokyo. Uh, its complexity rating is 1.49 on BGG. Uh, it is a Richard Garfield game. Uh, it's a very nice little production and a really good starter game for people just getting into the hobby. Um, this is good for Shoot, I probably play this with kids six years and older. Uh, it's a very good game. Uh, so let's talk about that. So in King of Tokyo, uh, what you're doing is you are on a rampage as a monster. And we'll go over some of those monsters. So here we have a uh, an alien monster. Then we have kind of the crab guy. Show those to you. Then we have what is... Uh, really is King Kong. We all know that's King Kong. And I even got a promo of the Cookie Monster. So I'm not going to go uh, over all the monsters or the rules of the game, but I want to tell you the idea is to get your point dial all the way up to 21st. And I'll show those, that to you. And see, so you have a dial up here at the top that shows 20. And then you have a dial here at the bottom that involves your health. So that right there is how you determine, um, of course, if you go all the way down, it's gonna go down to like a skull of death. And so that's gonna be uh, when you're out of the game. That's really hard to get out of the game, but then again, it's real easy to get out of the game. But basically, uh, you're gonna be taking your rampage into Tokyo, uh, and if you start your turn in Tokyo, you're going to get two points. When you initiate control of Tokyo, if no one's there, you get one point. And that's one way to score points. However, while you're in Tokyo, if someone rolls the dice, and I'm going to put the dice out here on the board so that you can see them. Um, we have a little claw here. Let me show you that claw. That is an attack. So if you're in Tokyo, any player not in Tokyo who rolls that right there, that's one health off of your total. Uh, and every one of these dice has a claw. So, I mean, if someone gets like a Yahtzee roll, uh, you're in trouble. Now, at the same time, when you are in Tokyo or Tokyo Bay, if you roll that, you damage all the players outside that are not in Tokyo. Um, and of course, you can surrender at any time. Of, when you're being attacked, you'll just take the damage and you come out of Tokyo. Uh, that is the basics of the game. Now in the game, you do have another uh, thing that you can do, and that is you collect, let me find them here to my right, these energy cubes. Now the energy cubes uh, are kind of like an income for the game. And what they do is they allow you to buy uh, cards that will actually help you along the way. Now there's a lot of cards here. Some of the cards give you energy, they let you do things to other players. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to the cards and getting the cards uh, to help progress the game. Uh, one of the reasons we like King of Tokyo uh, is one, it's easy to teach. Two, it's very thematic as far as what you're doing. It reminds me of Rampage. If anybody from the old arcade days remembers Rampage, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, but that is the next guy on my list. I think this was number four. Uh, and I'll do another video shortly uh, that will be uh, my number five. And until then, I'm Kevin Smith with Board Game Losers. See you next time.